Hi everybody, this is Doug Backinger, uh, Vice President of Sales at Caster Concepts. I've been with the company now just over 16 years, where the first half of that I spent in engineering doing product design and testing. Um, and a question that I get asked a lot, my team gets asked a lot, is you know, what parts of the caster really impact how easy it makes a cart you know, to get started moving? So like what impacts the push force? So today I wanted to take some time and go over the different elements of the caster that really play a huge impact on making a cart easier or harder to roll. So the first part I want to talk about is the caster design, mainly the swivel section and the swivel radius, swivel offset, we call it swivel lead. So with the actual swivel section design, um, there's two things that really impact that. One, how precise it's made. So the tolerancing used in the manufacturing of that swivel section. So the looser the tolerance is, the more slop you'll feel in a swivel section. And as that swivel section becomes looser, you have fewer and fewer bearing elements taking that load. So the tighter you can make your tolerances and the more precise you can make that swivel section, you will spread the load out among more of the bearing elements. So this will help that caster swivel easier and make your cart easier to, to push and maneuver. Um, the second part has to do with the hardness of the raceways. So in typical uh, like caster design, um, you know, the caster manufacturers really are designing our own bearing elements. So we have to make a trade off on what's manufacturable. And in this case, we heat treat our raceways, but then we also weld other components to that. So there's only a certain level you can get to um, and still be able to weld to that swivel section. So in this case, um, with other designs where you actually use like a sealed bearing element, um, you can make that essentially with higher grades of steel that you can't really weld to. So you get higher hardness, so you have less wear. That also makes the, sw the swivel section uh, smoother and uh, easier to rotate. Um, so next I'll talk about the swivel offset. So we call it the swivel lead, so it's how far off the center of the swivel section the wheel is located. And basically, you want this as far out as you can get. Because if you had that wheel right underneath the, the center of the swivel section, that wheel is not gonna track at all. It's not gonna go, know where to go. Um, so the drawback to moving that swivel lead out further is the further it gets out, the more of a moment you have on the swivel section. So you actually reduce the load carrying capability of your caster. So in this case, what we found in our testing is there's usually some sort of parabolic curve where uh, your push forces decrease up to a certain point, And then as you extend that swivel offset out further than that, um, it actually gets harder and harder to push because you're stressing that swivel section. So those are really the two elements we look at when we're trying to, you know, optimize push forces for a caster. So next we'll talk about wheel design. So with wheel design, um, you know, easiest thing you can do to make your cart easier to push, just increase the diameter. Going from a six inch diameter wheel to an eight inch diameter wheel, uh, will reduce your push force by usually around 20% because your, your rolling resistance is really inversely proportional to the diameter of the wheel, or I think the radius of the wheel is what's used in the formula. Um, the other thing which can have varying effects is your wheel width. So theoretically, the wider you make your wheel, what you're doing is you're spreading out that, that force or that stress on the wheel and you're actually making your contact patch or the length narrower. So that makes your wheel easier to get rolling. Now the drawback to being wider is, now you put that in a caster, the caster swivels around. If you have a wider wheel, that wheel is going to fight that more the wider it is. So there are drawbacks with going just as wide as you can. It'll make it easier to start pushing, but as soon as that caster wants to swivel, that's where you're gonna see drawbacks from going wider. So what we found is you can offset that um, by going to some of these split wheel designs you've seen in the industry. So with the split wheel design, basically say you have a three inch wide wheel, you now have three discs each one inch wide. 
So now you can have that wider wheel, uh, but you have different discs that independently rotate. So as that caster swivels around, the disc can spin at different rates, and that reduces that scrubbing effect from just going wider. Now, some of the drawbacks to going to a, a split wheel, you're pretty much stuck with one bearing design, um, so it really limits the amount of applications you can use it in. Um, but again, so those are the three main things we look at in wheel design. Next, wheel material. So just flat out, the harder the wheel is, the easier it is going to be to start moving when it's brand new. So the drawback to going to a really hard material, like a, like a steel wheel, uh, like nylon, uh, phenolics are common in the industry. So the harder that wheel is, the more it's gonna wear on your floors. So typically that's why people wanna stay away from harder materials. The next thing is, the harder that material, and especially with hard plastic wheels, they tend to pick up debris easier. So while it may push really easy to start, six months down the road, a year down the road, more than likely, it's not going to perform the same as it did on day one. So what we find in the industry is somewhere in the, you know, there'll be a, a chart here showing different shore hardnesses. So where like a nylon would be like a 90D durometer, what we find works best in industry to not wear your floors out, give good rejection of debris or not pick up debris is urethanes in the 85 to 95 shore A range. Now, if you go softer than that, you know, say in the, the 70 or 60 A range, kind of like a rubber, uh, what we find is that's too soft and you develop too much of a footprint, which then hurts your rollability. So now even with urethanes, there's different properties that we look at there to try and get better rollability. So big ones being compression set and rebound. So rebound is a measure of how much energy is returned when a, when a urethane is compressed. And then compression set is when it sits under load, how likely is it to deform, which then you have to be able to roll out that deformation. So we're looking for urethanes with high rebound and low compression set. So that, that's what we look at with wheel material. So we tend to stick with urethanes, uh, 85 to 95A durometer ranges, and then you know, specific materials, high rebound, low compression set. So the last thing I'll talk about is caster placement. So typically you think of a cart, you know, there's two rigid casters in the back that don't swivel, uh, and then two swivel casters in the front. So the reason people do this is you need the rigid casters for the, like if you're towing a cart, so it actually tracks. If you had all four swivels, um, that cart is gonna go kind of wherever it wants. So it's probably what I see most in industry, um, and it works well, but the, the drawback to that is you have two swivel casters, so if they happen to swivel around at the same time, that's going to increase the amount of push force needed to, to kind of fight through that. Uh, the other design that I see um, is kind of a diamond pattern, where you have two rigids directly across from each other in the center of the cart uh, with a swivel in the front and a swivel in the back. Typically, these are, are tilt, so you only have like one swivel caster on the ground at the time, at a time. And this works really well because usually your, your center of mass on a cart is right in the middle. And that's being taken by the rigid casters. So then you can usually put bigger wheels in the middle and really reduce your push force. Um, and you also kind of take the swivel casters out of play too by, by carrying most of that weight on the rigids. Uh, the drawback to this is with tilt carts, they're kind of kind of funky to play with, you know, there, there's a bit of, uh, you know, they want to move up and down so they can be a bit noisier when you're towing them around a plant. So really it's um, more plant preference on what's used, but in my experience, you can carry, carry heavier loads using the diamond pattern and still have really low push forces. If you have further questions um, or design that you want to run by us, feel free to reach out to me and I'd be glad to help you. Thank you.